Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you're new to the channel, it would benefit you to look at my playlists. This is where there's curated content according to theme. The most important playlist on this channel is the Russia and China playlist. I strongly urge you, whether you've been here for six months, a year, whether you've been here for the beginning, if you have not gone through at least five or seven of the Russia videos, you will not understand how God is planning to bring about the final judgment of the United States, what God says is going to happen, what are the circumstances that we can expect to see whoever will still be in this country at that time, because there will be people exiting America for many, many different reasons, personal reasons. God will speak to people's hearts. People will start to yearn for their homeland, but also people are going to have wise conversations, especially foreigners. They're going to see that America has become not a good place to live, not a good place to invest, difficulties, and they're just going to decide to cut their losses and leave. This is people who leave while there is time when the borders are open, you're just you know, immigrating back home. And even Americans are going to move. Many Americans are going to move out of the United States. They're going to go um, close. I won't call it further afield. They're going to go close. They're going to go to Canada. They're going to go to Chile and Brazil. They're going to go to Mexico and places like that. And then there are people who are going to go much further afield. And this is all part of what God calls a scattering, that the United States, people of the United States are going to be scattered. And this just means diaspora. People are going to you know, just go and speckle all over the, all over the world. People are going to move. And then there's going to come, um, things that are more hard impact. So this is definitely an event that's going to take here, take place here in the United States. That's going to be the same as 9-11. God said that America is going to have another 9-11 and that is going to greatly scatter people. People are going to decide that it's just too much of a coincidence for one country to have two such systemic traumatic events and they are going to pack up and exit. And I've already shared in a recent video, I can't remember the title of the video now, but I will try to link it in the description, that when America has this traumatic event, the Lord said that it is not caused by any foreign power. It is not any nation striking us, no matter what the official narrative will be, which is, of course, they're going to come up with yet another boogeyman. Of course, it was one of the bad guys. Somebody did this to us. The Lord says that this is an internal act of war against America because it is what they're going to use to bring in the new world order. It is what they're going to use to bring in an extremely controlling, overpowering, domineering, highly privacy invasive type of rulership. And it's going to be like a gridlock around us. And that new life, I have detailed that life and how it will change its face. Obviously, they're going to say it's for the peace of America. It's for security reasons. It's for safety, safety of the children when they're at school and safety for us when we're on the highways and safeties to secure our national borders. It's all talk. It is a false flag. America is going to become a nation of false flags. You're watching how all of a sudden the trains that have been running on the track, all of a sudden they don't know how to stay on the track. And lo and behold, as they're coming off the track, they're taking dangerous chemicals and spilling them all over the place. And then the way that the government is deciding to get rid of the chemicals is to go and burn them, to turn them into a gaseous form that can then be caught up by high winds and spread over an impossible part of the landmass. And we are supposed to look at this and believe that this is all stuff that is happening by itself. And the government is every bit as surprised as everybody else and is just trying to recover. And God just wants us not to be naive. I've covered all these things in detail in a, I think it was three prophecies. It's called America in Turmoil. And one of, the, one of those prophecies was saying that we are going into a future of suitcase bombs and small bombs that will be going off in cafes, that will be going off in schools, that will be going off in office buildings. And he says that the terror of the Unabomber will come back. The terror of the Unabomber will come back. And the Lord showed me 
in those prophecies entitled America in Turmoil, that life became very unstable in the cities especially, and that people began to make hard decisions about going to stay with relatives who live outside, not even in the suburbs, but outside in those states where people are not gathered into mega cities like Chicago and Miami and New York and things like that. And so that is what is coming. The Lord also said that America will have a big war. And I have discussed that war many times. I will do again in this video. That is the war between Russia, China, and the United States, where I think in one of the videos, it said wars and civil wars. I will link it in the description where I said that God showed me three hippos, three hippos fighting in a, um, I will just say a lake, and it was a fight to the death. It was one of those law of the jungle fights, and two of the hippos were seriously pummeling the smallest hippo, and they were raising up and hitting him with those heavy feet. And, and um, I said that as I saw them fighting in that vision, it was such a vicious fight that they stampeded and they churned up all the mud. So the lake bed went from being just, you know, a normal lake with water and then the mud quiet at the bottom. They trampled that much so much that instead of water flying out after a while, it turned to mud flying out. And what I didn't say in that vision is that this mud that you see flying everywhere, there's no country that's going to be unaffected by this thing that Russia and China are going to do to America. There is a reason that Revelation 18 is pretty descriptive and is pretty clear about what will happen in the world at that time. What happens when a superpower that is basically at the center of world commerce, world politics, world everything, world trade, what happens when that superpower goes down? And what happens when it's not a quiet and slow decline, which it will be for a while? People, buckle in and strap up. You need to work on your stamina. You really need to work on your heart's ability to absorb and deal with things as they happen because the end of America is not going to be some fizzy firecracker bang, just it just happens in a, in a year or two. Uh, I can see all the people who don't have stamina because they're like, oh no, he, it has to be. We're already in the tribulation. I, I don't know what to tell you. If we're in the tribulation and you, your lights are on and you're actually in your home, then, then what a tribulation it is, huh? You can just be in the tribulation and, and Amazon will deliver to your house. So what the Bible said about tribulation is that Walmart will still be open. And you can get on any super highway and drive your children to school and drop them off and pick them up safely because that's what the tribulation is going to be like. Jesus described it. Jesus, in his wisdom, said that when it's time for tribulation, it will be a time upon the earth never seen before, nor shall those days ever be again. So just from that description, God is telling us we've never seen the kind of horrendous experiences as tribulation. And then he said, we will never see such a time again. And then he went on another place and said that if he did not shorten those days, no flesh would survive. But despite all those clues, there are people who believe that we are in tribulation. And all I can say is that God bless you as you go through tribulation and you still have gas and a car. So this nation is going to go through a long, slow decline that is going to require people to really work on their stamina, to really work on their faith, to really work on their spiritual endurance, to really go back to Galatians chapter five and verses two and three and begin to seek God to develop those fruit. Your long suffering, forget about the love, joy, and the peace part, because everybody will always wants to major on those ones. Oh, you know, we have to have love for one another. Yes, he said, you will know, though the whole world will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one for another. This is great. I'm not decrying that because then some people will go off and make an entire segment how Celestial said some, some fruits are more important than others. Every fruit is important in its applicable place. And all I am saying is that 
as we go into a situation where America is not going to have enough resources for everybody. There will not be enough to go around in this country. The wicked people know this. And so the wicked people's way, their idea of how resources can be made to stretch further is to reduce the population. God called it a Malthusian approach. Thomas Malthus believed that sickness, death, and other bad things should simply happen freely in the population and should be encouraged. He was not a fan of medical care because he felt that disease should take away the weak and whoever couldn't make it. So there's many factors against people. And all I'm saying is to familiarize yourself with the fruit of the spirit and set about in prayer and seeking God and spending time with the Holy Spirit and learning how to check your own self, learning how to check when you want to say something back or when you want to certainly, uh, what, what do they call it, just clap back when you want to do that, perhaps it's worth a second and a third think before you do those things because the times that we're going into are going to require quite a lot from us. So in addition to a big war, the Lord was saying this morning that America will have many small wars and he mentioned this man, President Assad. So um, I've spoken of this before, that America and Syria are still due to have another confrontation. But God says it will come to a point where it basically seems that America is fighting everybody. So I do not know if this is physical entanglements of war or if it is just war of words where everybody's going to be saying things about this country. And there will come a time when the United States, instead of being the darling of the world, is going to be extremely attacked extremely, extremely attacked. Everybody will be talking. Everybody will be saying something. Everybody will just be branching off and following their own public policy, doing what's best for their countries. America will not have as many allies as she had in the past. And all of this is part of what God was saying. And so now I will give the word. I have not yet put this word up. It is quite a lengthy word. It may require a part one and a part two. But we will see how the Father leads. The first part of this prophecy is concerning the wickedness of the Amorites. I spoke a little bit about the Amorites just before. And the Amorites were, um, they were a fighting people. You know, in those days, I guess if you wanted to last, you had to be a fighting people. You couldn't just be a nation that sat there. You know, and so the Amorites were quite warfaring. They were quite warlike. They had strong men, feminine women, a strong society, and they were kind of like marauders. This is what Amorites were. And they did quite a lot of things that go directly against the law of God. And at that time, Moses was not alive, so there was not even any law written down. God, God was expecting that people would know how to do what was right in their heart, but people lived according to their own dictates and the Amorites were quite wicked. And God was speaking to Abraham and telling him, you know, concerning these people, the Amorites, their cup, their iniquity is not yet full. There comes a time when God will judge sin. There comes a time when God can no longer continue to occupy his title as the good shepherd, the good, good father. Because in order for, for God to be truly judged as good, he must be just. And it is not just to allow sin to continue unchecked without giving it a sentence and without eventually eradicating it. And there is no one who knows this more than Satan. The reason that Satan continues to entice people into sin is because Satan is strongly hoping that people who continue in a sinful lifestyle, that they will reach that peak where their cup is full and God must judge. And this is usually when we see horrible things happening to people. It's not always death. You might just see someone plunge from fame. You just might see someone plunge from a high position. You might see someone being um, the victim of a terrible sickness. And depending on what that person's judgment is, they may not win against the sickness. They may lose their life. All these things are judgment. You might be rejected from a group where you, you really found love, you really find, found acceptance, but because of certain traits in you, those people will put you away. They will shut the door on you. They will give up on you. And you can't complain and say, they're not loving, they're not kind. Why? Because sin has to be judged. After I made the first video, I went for a brief walk. And as I was walking, the Lord was charging me and saying to me, Celestial, can you win against something that you love? 
And I'm just walking and I know that the answer is no. Those who have children, when your child is being as sweet as a button and still doing something wrong, do you feel strongly moved to chastise them? No. The Lord was asking me, how can you triumph over what you love? How can you ever get the best of what you practice? And all of these are just questions. If you continue on in certain sins, how can you say that you hate the sin? It is not the truth. This is why some people are not getting any release from the place of prayer. Because you're going to God and you're telling God, oh, I wish that I could stop it. Oh God, I wish that I could stop it. I hate it. But God can see the seed of the lust for the thing in you. God is not interested in our words. It's only when our words are spiritually latched. What does it mean to spiritually latch your words? It means that your words have actually latched on to scripture. You go to God and you have some Bible verse. Even if the Bible verse is just, you know, Lord, I'm trapped in the sin and who will rescue me from this body of sin? As Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, you can go with that scripture and God who wrote that scripture through the mouth of Paul knows that you are saying, Lord, what I will to do, I don't do. It is what I hate that I do. You go to God and your words are latched onto something like that. Guess what God is working with? He is working with the confession of the scripture. He's not working with what's coming out of your mouth because what's coming out of your mouth, if it's not latched to anything, it's just words. It's just flowing here and it's flowing there and it's going left and it's going right. It doesn't really mean anything. But when your words are latched to God's own words, it's his word that he's taking in the prayer to help you. God can see dichotomy in us. So that's what he was asking me outside. Who can win against the sin that he loves? Who can prevail against something that he secretly lusts for? And the answer is a whopping nobody. We must hate sin. It doesn't matter if the sin has ended you in jail. It doesn't matter if you've already been judged in the natural and now you've lost your freedom. You go right on ahead in that prison and you hate the sin that put you there. Stop hating the warden. Stop hating your friends who snitched on you. Stop blaming the system. Hate the activity that puts you at a time and place you should not have been because that is the starting place for mercy. That's the starting point for the goodness of God to come and meet you there and say, my son, my daughter, I heard your cry for what? For mercy. And I heard what else? Your confession of sin. And now I have come. Now I have come. And so God says concerning the cup of the Amorites, America's cup is overflowing. The sins of this country have reached up to God. I have always been warning for years here that King Nebuchadnezzar had a very long rope. God gave that wicked man a long rope. God showed that man some incredible mercy and that God put a prophet by that man's side to counsel him, to show him what is good. Daniel was the most shining example of righteousness. He was not the only example. Shadrach was there, Meshach was there, Abednego was there, and I'm sure many other Israelites who were trained in the court. It was just those four that have come to public notice because their names were captured in the biblical record. A prophet was by that man's side and he kept right on sinning. Just like some people have that amazing grandma that has been talking to them until she went to glory and they have kept right on sinning. Their mother has taken grandma's place in warning them and they continue to sin until the Amorite cup becomes full. God said many people, such as the people who continue on without repenting in homosexual relationships, he said your family will stand right there when you start to get these novel diseases that are coming only for the gay community. He said they will stand right there and watch you get sick and bury you because you have continued. And that is what happens when the cup is full to overflowing. God said America's cup of sin has overflowed and now he will mix a cup for her himself and he will force her to drink it to the very last drop. That prophecy is called blood to drink. I will link it in the description. I will watch this video back as always and try to leave links for you, but you have to do the work. Blood to drink is one of the most grotesque prophecies that I have ever received on the master's voice. The topics that God covered and the way in which he covered was not easy for me to bear. 
the way that God came at me was one of those things where you think, um, okay, Lord, I'm only flesh and blood, please, because your presence is so scary right now. So the Lord said, I should prophesy against the nation of the United States and to tell her that this nation will serve her enemies in a foreign land. This is not new. He says, though she trusts in her great armaments, which means her weapons, and she trusts in her great walls, which means the border, I will make those walls fall and her armaments will be non-responsive. This means that at the time America wants to trust in weaponry, um, I know the word, missile defense systems, Thank you, TV. When she wants to trust in missile defense systems, those things will be non-responsive. He said none of their equipment will work. There will be no response to their frantic attempts to launch by sea and air. The missiles will be still, and there will be no answer from America in the day of the wrath of the Lord. And I have covered this fact by another prophecy, I will get the name in a moment, where God says that America's missiles will somehow be disabled in the day of war. And there's people who say, oh no, it be, it's because an electromagnetic pulse will go out and everything. What I say is what the Lord has revealed to me. And what God has revealed to me is that there are um, anti-American forces working at the highest level of government in this country. So people who are not the friend of America, people who are not allies, and those people are in two groups. They are foreign agents who are working here, who have access to high level things. There are Russians who were born here or Russians who immigrated here and then gave birth to a second generation here. And those generation are full born, full blown Americans who have worked their way through the ranks. They have American first names and last names. They have no trace of, an, of a Russian accent. There is nothing that can mark them as Russians. And God says that these people are seeded and planted all through the United States. There is not an inch where they do not live he said that Russia had a long range plan from decades ago, and the plan has been successful. They have put their people in places. So it's foreign agents who have access to high level power. It's Russian agents who are very high in places and seated all through the population. And God said that they look more American than Americans. They are actors, they are lawyers, they are dentists, they are doctors, they are Fran next door who always brings pumpkin pie to the house. And there is simply no way to know who they are by now. And the third category is Americans themselves. That is Americans who have totally no heart for the country, who will give away what God said is that they will give away the launch codes or the launch sequences for American missiles. And in the day America needs to depend on these things to fly where they should fly, they won't fly anywhere because Americans from inside have already sabotaged them. So he says no equipment will work. There will be no response to launch by sea and by air. And one of the visions that I saw today is I just saw Russia flying over and just dropping an incredible amount of bombs. And God spoke of this and it is called carpet bombing. And in an old prophecy, I said that God said exactly what America did to Iraq. Russia and China will come here and do it to America. Carpet bombing is where you just fly over an area. You don't care if there's a school there, a hospital there, a lonely goat there, an old lady that is just outside her house sitting on the grass. You don't care if it's a suburban area and you cannot distinguish residential areas from perhaps the areas where they build ships for the military and where they build planes for the military. So you don't even pay attention to the zones. You just fly over and just drop a payload over the area. And that is what I was seeing. I've also said in the past that God said that we will hear the sound of the air raid sirens in America. And he brought it up again today. So God says, I will deliver this nation to its enemies and they will serve in slavery for the iniquity of their deeds, for multiplying its sins before me for defying me and my laws and for refusing to trust in me, 
but trusting in its own might and power, I will humble it, he means the nation, I will humble it with hunger and famine and slavery. They will serve Russia beyond the great river, and then he said, Euphrates, and that will be the collapse of their empire. They will be chattel in a foreign nation, and their woes will be multiplied who seek after other gods to inquire of them and seek creatures to be their deliverance. Russia is Gog, and with China shall overrun this nation. America will serve them both in the days of the wrath of the Lord. Naked into captivity they will go, wailing in anguish for the repayment of their many sins upon them. This is the word of the Lord. So at the beginning of the video, I was speaking about various ways that people will leave this country. And this is the most heartbreaking way that God revealed to me in 2019. This is a revelation that took me completely by surprise because for all the many years that God has been showing me Russia and China, he never showed me anything quite so tragic as saying that America will be taken into slavery for being a slaver herself. This is something that whenever I speak it, there is always judgment of me, accusation of me, and pushback. But by now we understand that these things come with this job and they do not move me and I will not shift from the, from the stance that God has given me. There are about three prophecies on the master's voice, or five, I think there are about five, that speak specifically to the slavery of the future being a punishment for the slavery that was done here, for the blood that was spilled here, for the sexual rape attack and the dehumanizing of an entire group of people that has never been properly addressed nor repented for. Because if this sin had been repented for, it would not be coming up in the Lord's judgment. And one of the things that I've noticed is if I say that America is guilty for abortion, people cry out and say, the poor babies, we are sorry. If I say that there's homosexuality in the nation and that God is angry with it, people say, we will talk to our children who are bending their gender. But when slavery comes up, there is something like a stub that goes over people's hearts. It's like, well, you know, you know, the Arabs used to slave. God didn't send me to speak to any Arabs. The Arabs are in Dubai with their slavery past and whoever their prophet is, may he speak to them. God sent me here to say that for the blood that soaked this soil and just for the things that I have seen that even I did not know about, he will repay for the African-American and for the Native American. He will surely repay. And he says that people are defiant against him. And so hunger, famine, and slavery will be the judgment. And when I was writing this down, when the Lord said the Euphrates, I thought, is the Euphrates near Russia? But I wrote everything down. I always write down the Lord's words first. When I have captured everything, then I go and I start to do my own little, let me see, because this puzzled me. I'm not going to fact check God. I'm not going to disrespect him. I'm going to enlighten myself and understand what it is that I have written so I can have understanding. And when I wrote, is Russia beyond the Euphrates? The first result that came up was a recent thing from the war in Ukraine. And it says, Russia crosses the Ukraine. The, um, the Euphrates into Ukraine. And I thought, okay, apparently from the two articles that I read, Russia is on the east of this great river, which means that when they take people from here, they will indeed take them across this river into their country. And God says this is the punishment to become chattel, which is the same kind of word that was used for the slavery of the African Americans. It was called chattel slavery. This is where you have absolutely no rights, no discussion, no anything. It says they will be chattel in a foreign nation and their walls will be multiplied because they sought other gods to inquire of them and they sought creatures to be their deliverance. This is straight up the prophecy that is called the fallen ones will return 
and the fallen ones will rule, in which the Lord said, and I just spoke of it two or three video videos back in the banking sector, that every single thing that the world governments are doing, it is not of a human import, meaning it is not human beings sitting together as they do at the United Nations, pretending to put their heads together and come to a consensus as to what should we do for the nations of the world. God is saying that in this country, people inquire of Satan, Satanism, in the high places. They inquire of the devil and other gods, fallen angels and alien beings as to what is to be done here. And he said he will punish America for seeking creatures to be their deliverance. How can America seek a creature to deliver her? I put it to you, weapons and technology and advancements by which she hopes to retain supremacy forever in the earth. Teach us how to do this and teach us how to do that. Just like the fallen angels came in the days of Noah and gave human beings all that knowledge, all that advancement, all those um, um, ability to smelt iron and to do things that enabled people to suddenly catapult out of an old age, the ancient world, many scholars agree was far more advanced in a lot of areas than we are today. Flying was not new to them. In India, they've seen pictures of the Vimanas, which look like little triangular flying saucers written on the temples of the walls of temples that are older than America. So even flying was not new to them. They had a lot of arcane knowledge. Arcane knowledge means knowledge that people should not know, knowledge that should be kept for, from us, secret knowledge, hidden knowledge. And that is because creatures lived among them and America is in connection with these things. I have said it and I will continue to say it because God has said it. This country is going to go from pretending to be innocent about not knowing what is zipping up and down in the atmosphere and will bring upon this nation and the whole world alien reveal. The Lord made a distinction. He said, when something is disclosed, it means that there are facts and it's up to you who has the facts. You decide, oh, I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to make it known. When something is revealed, God said, it means that somebody else has taken matters into their own hand, like somebody who knows when you're having an affair and tells you, either you tell your husband that you're cheating by this weekend, or I will. When you go to your husband and tell him, that is disclosure. When somebody else goes over your head with a threat and tells your husband, that is a reveal. It means it's out of your hand. America's going to have Alien reveal, they're going to show themselves. And before they show themselves, for God says that this nation cannot control these creatures. And I said in many old videos, no one should be surprised because who can control Satan? Satan could not even be tolerated in heaven and he was kicked out. And at the end times, he will be cast out of the heavens completely. Revelation chapter 12. No one can control the devil. America became entangled with these beings because of her own greed, because she wanted to win the arms race and this race and that race. And now she has put her hand into the hand of the undead. And God says she will be punished for this by going naked into captivity, wailing with anguish, because he says he will repay all the many sins of this country at one time. The thing that I feared has fallen upon me, said Job. This is the Lord speaking. I was writing. The thing that I feared of has fallen upon me, said Job. Tell the United States of America that their worst fears will be realized. America, you fear Russian supremacy. You fear that at the end of a lifetime of conquest and struggling for supremacy, in the end, Russia will still be declared the winner. You did everything to secure the win, but you will not win. And this is the irony of the punishment that God has brought upon this nation. I've always said it. The irony is that 
the people that are vilified on the news, the people who are the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf is going to come here and set up barracks here and live here. You have done everything to secure the win, but you will not win and Russia will triumph over you. Russia will bring great ships here filled with weapons that you can't even detect, even when they are off your coasts. You will not see them or hear them. They will be silent in the seas, listening to your communications and taking careful note of everything you say. And one of the prophecies that goes with this is called the hub. And in that prophecy, um, I saw what looked like a total junkyard. So this thing, it just looked like a junkyard in Arizona or anywhere else that you would just drive by. You know where you just have junk abandoned cars on a very big lot running next to a highway. So there's a highway running by and then someone has just bought some land and fenced it in with chain wire fence that you can look through the mesh fencing and then in there there were just junk trailers and junk cars and the junk heads of the monster trucks and things like that and then the lord put me there above one of these trailers that just looked you know the trailer was in such bad shape that nobody would even want to steal the trailer and then all of a sudden i came through the roof of the trailer and what i saw in there was state of the art electronics large screens and depending on the size of the trailer some of them were very big and some were smaller in that junkyard quite a couple of them in that trailer were computers some of them had a wall-to-wall -wall screen with data running across it and everywhere seated on chairs or beanbags or stuff like that were men with communication stuff in their ears. And some of them were listening to recording and some of them were taking notes from what they were recording. And in another vision, I saw submarines all around the different coasts of America, but it was mostly the New York side that God was showing me. And I saw that these submarines can come very close to, I don't know what it's called. I don't know if it's the border, if it's in the water, but they can come very close to the American landmass and the submarines can come so close and they will not trigger anything. God says that these, that these people have cloaking technology even for their planes, that they can fly over and they can gather intel and nothing will ping in America. So nothing will go off. Nothing will alert the Americans that, hey, there's a person in the airspace or hey, there's a person in the water. And so they come close enough to be able to listen to communications and uh, another thing that God said is that Russian communications have hacked into American communications and your words are, are recorded as you speak. Additionally, there is data from the cloud and from many apps in use in America. The fixation with frivolities have given your enemies great insight into the kind of people that you are. They will use that to their benefit when they conduct psychological warfare on you. Individuals will be broken down in questioning using the very data that is so freely available on social media apps and platforms, and it will be used to the Russians' advantage. And so God was saying that in high places in the old prophecies, you can find all this on the Russia and China playlist, either on the Master's Voice blog or here in the playlist. He was saying that um, even the communications of the White House are not secure, even the communications of the White House. So all those speeches and things that they say in you know private rooms and stuff like that, there are people in there with that kind of access who uh, share this information. And he also says that when it comes to the kind of data streams that we have, all the stuff now is being electronically given to the hospital. So the hospitals have your name, your date of birth, and your husband's name. And maybe if you're a mom, how many children that you have and every kind of illness that you've ever had. And all of these things are being put in web portals and stuff like that, or they're kept on CDs. And so all this information, plus the American fixation with playing with apps, downloading the app that makes you old, but you don't notice that when you download it, it says this app requires permission to access your camera, access your microphone, access your contacts list, access this and that and that. And then you don't notice that tiny print that says made in Guangzhou. And then there are apps that everybody knows is made in Guangzhou, like TikTok. And there's like, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of people from adult to children holding this phone live and beaming it all around their house, 
filming their fathers, mothers, cats, dogs, everything is going into this app. It's just one big data gull. And this is what they're going to use. They're going to use the stuff right off your Facebook page to torment you, to separate you. I saw that people will be separated by age and by gender. So if you are a man who thinks you are a woman, you can enjoy it now, but Samantha time is coming to an end, Stuart, because they will put you with the men and you will get then the trans punishment, the transvestite punishment, and just the, sh the sheer disdain that Russia and China have for this type of lifestyle. Disdain that President Putin has spoken out loud less than a month ago at the State of the Nation address, saying that America is in no shape to tell anyone what to do because a country that cannot tell what a man is and a woman is cannot stand in front of people and make laws and give orders. Russia and China will not tolerate people who blend their sexuality. People will be starkly separated into what they visibly are. And then separated by age, the older people by themselves, and then different age brackets. And then when it comes time, as he is saying, this is something new that I've never heard before. Comes time for the psychological warfare. Then they're asking a mother, so um, your daughter, Courtney, it's been a long time since you've seen her, huh? And then you immediately are at a disadvantage because that arrow has gone to the core of your being as a father, as a mother, to be asked. So, um, you know, your son, Brandon, um, we shipped him off to Africa to work there. How do you feel about that? And they'll be staring directly into people's eyes, watching them die a million times over to know that just like African-Americans were separated on the auction block and never saw their next of kin again, this will be again in the nation. So is it me that is saying these things or is it the one who, who judges justly who is saying these things? I have never heard this aspect before, breaking individuals down and questioning, using the very data that they so freely give to social media apps and platforms, and all of it will be used to the Russians' advantage. And so the Lord was saying that in the pre-dawn hours of a winter's day, and I have always seen that it was very early and very cold when those men and women started coming up out of the sea in this aqua black uh, suit, diving suit kind of thing out of some freezing cold water. He says in the pre-dawn hours of a winter's day, the Russian shouts of victory will shatter the air and ruin the complacency of this nation forever. America, you will not die a hero. You will not fire a shot. There will be no resistance because you are completely unaware and unprepared for what will happen. They will come suddenly without warning, and your empire will collapse. Russian savagery is legendary. They can hunt and kill in a methodical manner with impeccable skill. They kill wild animals in the forest without fear, and they teach their offspring to do the same. They are a hardy people, but you have hardened them by your lies and criminal attacks on them. This is the word of the Lord. And I'm always glad when the Lord will say something and then say, this is the word of the Lord. To wise people, when you hear something and the final sentence is, this is the word of the Lord, we understand that whatever thoughts we might have in private, when the Lord says, this is my word, it means that this is my just estimation. So for instance, when God says that Russians can hunt and kill methodically, the place I will send you to see that is where he sent me to see that completely out of the blue is Joel chapter two. Read Joel chapter two, just from verse one to about verse 18, and tell me what you see described there. The verse is so clear. It says they come like a thief in the night. They enter in at the windows. And I was reading this thing and I was amazed because what God showed me in the old prophecies is a picture of a man in bed bundled up and asleep. And he did not know that a high precision rifle was pointed at him. The Russian had entered into the house. The man who was in the bed was America, and the Russian was poised behind him with the gun. That's Russia. And the guy had been standing there for I don't know how long. And the Lord said to me, do you see these people? They are able to wait 
forever for their moment. I had no idea how long that man had been sleeping. I had no idea how long that man had been standing there. And what God was showing is that the Russian would stand there with the gun and not make a move, would not shove him with the gun and say, hey, hey, wake up. No, he would wait to enjoy the moment until that guy rolled over and saw him for himself. This is the kind of mind that God is describing in Joel chapter two. I was going to read all these things, but it will make the video very long. So please read Ezekiel chapter 11. I will give you the notations where to start and stop. And please read Joel chapter two. I will pause and I will add them at the very end of the video. And so God says that Russians are hardy. And I shared an old vision about um, back in the time they called perestroika, I think, and in the hard times that Russia has had where they had to stand in line for bread and their money was useless and they would line up in the snow for hours. I was seeing this little old sketchy, you know, like a Charlie Chaplin movie kind of image of them. And they were standing and they were so patient waiting for this bread to be distributed. And God was saying to me, Celestial, do you think that when these times come to America, that Americans can stand in line patiently and quietly like this in snow to wait for the little food that they need? Do you think that they can stand in line like this without complaining, waiting for that food? And of course I didn't answer because I know that the answer is no. America will have air raid sirens because she will be bombed like an enemy target. Foreign planes will lay carpet bombs on the USA while her own machines remain grounded and unresponded, responsive. America cannot match the weapons that China has. What Russia is getting, what Russia and China are procuring even now and putting together. So I received something from the Lord. Just a moment, please. I spoke about this in the first video and I said that a long time ago, the Lord was just talking to me about something and these are from my notes. I'm not going to publish this. I'm only going to read some of it, some of the things. It's dated June 18, 2019, and it's simply titled Information About the Times to Come. I saw that China had a gun and God had told me not to speak of this gun, but today he said to speak of it. This gun, I call it the plasma ray gun. It does not look like normal guns. In fact, the, the guns that I've seen with the people who wear black, it's not a handgun and it's not even the shape of a rifle. The guns that these guys in black are going to have in the end times is a very kind of, it's, it's this thick, if you can imagine it. The gun is this thick and it's very long and blocky and they wear it across their front. It almost looks like when you, you know, when you're in a band and you wear the keyboard across your body, it's a big blocky black gun that I've seen them with. And so China had in this, in this thing that God was saying and showing me a gun that I called a plasma ray gun. And when you turn that gun on a person, they melt like wax, whatever part of the gun that you hit, it, they melt like wax. And what the Lord said to me is this gun excites the molecules of human flesh, many triplicates of millions of times. So the scientist people will know that, you know, energy is made when I think atoms and neurons and things like that, they get excited and they move around. And then I think that's where energy comes from. But God says that molecules will be excited many millions, triplicates of millions, which means billions and trillions of times more. So the kind of energy that will be produced on the body part that they hit will instantly liquidize that body part. He said that the Lord says that when this beam touches flesh, it will polarize it, magnetize it, and make it drip like wax. And I saw in the image that a person's arm got hit by the gun and that arm instantly became weak. That's the only way. And it slid off their body like a melted candle wax piece. It just went and just literally slumped off. And if you move that gun, if you move that plasma ray gun, it can slice off a person however you moved it diagonally and they will just slide off like that it acts almost like a sword but it is 
a ray. It is a shooting beam ray. And that's why I said only these people who watch Avengers and X-Men, it might make more sense to them. And I saw, I did not see the other weapons, but the Lord said to me that China will have a whole new range of weapons that no one has ever seen before that will catapult them to the top of the weapons and arms race of the future. The Lord said the nations will no longer compete to only win in war. They are competing and preparing for the arms race of the future. And so that was just one thing from my notes. Um, excuse me, please. That is just one thing. And so God was saying that America will receive bombing and have air raid sirens and that America can't match the kind of weapons that China has and that Russia has. And he said that only people who have passed away here in America will actually have peace. And this is straight out of Ezekiel chapter 11, where they said, this city is the cauldron and we are the meat. Meaning this city is impenetrable. Our borders are impenetrable and we're safe as pieces of meat inside the pot. And what God said to them was only those who have died in your city can count themselves to be meat. Only they are safe for what's happening because I will take you to the border of your land, judge you at the border and then cross you over and you will serve your enemies in a foreign land. And so God says, the dead are at peace and their test is over. But to those who are alive, you will be tested like never before. I will test you in all ways to see whose you are. And in the days that the trees are falling, make sure that you do not fall with them. And I have explained in many videos what that test will be. So thank you for being with me. I am Celestial and goodbye.